Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello, everyone. So today I feel like talking about the six parameters of the Bodhisattva path. So for Theravada Buddhists, usually they follow the Buddha's earliest teachings, such as the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path in pursuit of enlightenment to the stage of Arahant. Whereas for people who are following the Mahayana path, Right, we're first focusing on generating bodhicitta. And once one has generated the bodhicitta, one shall follow the six parameters of the bodhisattva path. Parameters can be translated as perfections. So the six perfections of the bodhisattva path. This is also a guidance for how those who are interested in taking up the bodhisattva path shall practice. And remember the six parameters, the basis is that one should first generate bodhicitta. Without generating bodhicitta, if one practices the six parameters, and it's not really perfections. For those who have generated the bodhicitta, and you practice the six parameters, then it can be called perfections. And we'll see why. So the six parameters are first, giving or generosity. Second, right, morality or precepts. And third, forbearance or patience. And fourth, diligence. And fifth is meditation or meditative concentration. And sixth is prajna or transcendent wisdom, great wisdom. So let's look at each of the parameters separately. So first, it's giving or generosity. A bodhisattva should practice giving, practice generosity. Uh, this is the easiest way for one to get rid of the self and get rid of greed. Uh, greed, anger, and ignorance are the three poisons, uh, three mental defilements. In order to get rid of greed, uh, one shall practice giving, practice generosity. So generally, there are three types of giving. Right? First is the giving of wealth or money. Right? Second is the giving of Dharma. If you're sharing Dharma to others, then you're giving the gift of Dharma to others. And in the Sutra, the Buddha told us that the gift of the Dharma is the highest gift of it all. Why is that? Because by listening to and practice in accordance with the Buddha Dharma, it can help one to be awakened and liberated from all sufferings in life. That's why as Buddhists, we shall try to share the Dharma with others as much as we can. And third is fearless giving. So what is fearless giving? For instance, if you know someone who is sick and you provide them with medicine, etc., this is a form of fearless giving. For people who adopt a plant-based diet, this is also a form of fearless giving. Now, I'm not saying that as a Buddhist, you must be a vegetarian or vegan, but if you can adopt a plant-based diet, this is also a form of fearless giving. So in Mahayana Sutras, in a number of Mahayana Sutras, the Buddha also talk about how the Bodhisattvas will refrain from consuming meat because this may kill the seed of compassion. Uh, there are really quite a lot of Mahayana Sutras that talk about this. Right? Of course, for uh, beginners into Buddhism, there is no such requirement. But later, if you really see that all sentient beings have actually, in fact, all been our relatives, families in our past lives, then one may want to I refrain from consuming meat or consuming less meat. And also given uh, the situation of our environment, uh, it is really a uh, time for more people to make a more conscious choice of what we eat for the sake of our environment, for the sake of uh, sustainable living in our planet. Also, a bodhisattva shall not practice giving for the sake of one's own benefit. For instance, you might hear the Buddha say, through giving out more of our money, we can get richer later. 
and you practice giving for this purpose. So yes, you will get the blessing of gaining more wealth in the future, but this cannot really be called the Bodhisattva's perfections. Or if you share the Dharma for your own fame and wealth, like this can also not be called the Bodhisattva's perfections. That's why to generate Bodhicitta is the basis for one to practice the six parameters. Like without Bodhicitta, one is not really practicing the six parameters. A Bodhisattva shall practice giving without attaching to anything whatsoever, like the Buddha said in the Diamond Sutra. Although the Bodhisattva generate a mind to benefit all sentient beings, but they are also not attached to this concept. They are not attached to the notion of the I, the notion of the self, the notion of others, and the notion of sentient beings. Uh, they simply give or performing the acts to benefit all sentient beings without any attachment whatsoever. And the second is precepts or morality. Uh, this is also important. Uh, for lay Buddhists, one can observe the five precepts or occasionally the eight precepts. For those who have taken up the Bodhisattva's vows and really walking on the Bodhisattva's path, one can also take up the Bodhisattva precepts. So there are uh, different precepts in Buddhism uh, depending on your uh, level of practice and your level of aspiration. Uh, precepts are also important. Uh, if we can observe the precepts, it helps us to purify our mind, which can help us to enter into meditative concentration much more easily. So observing precepts are quite important in Buddhism. Uh, even for Pure Land practitioners, uh, in Chinese Pure Land Buddhism, there is also an emphasis uh, for one to observe the precepts and Nian Fo. Uh, this will be much easier for us to attain rebirth in the Pure Land and one can also attain a higher grade of rebirth when we go to the Pure Land. And third is forbearance or patience. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, it means that one is not easily disturbed by whatever situations one may encounter. In the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha also said that uh, all the Dharmas are obtained because of forbearance, because of patience. Uh, without patience, without forbearance, one may easily get agitated or angry or anxious when someone said something or did something to us. With patience, with forbearance, uh, one can bear any situation. If one can face any situation with patience, with forbearance, then one is not easily disturbed by anybody or any situations. And that's why all the dharmas are obtained because of patience, because of forbearance. Also with patience and forbearance, it can help us overcome anger. And the fourth is diligence. So diligence is important if we want to obtain success on our spiritual journey. Uh, even for Nianfo practitioners, our daily practice of Nianfo is also important to help us cultivate a habit of being mindful of Amitabha Buddha, which can help us reduce our afflictions in our daily life, to help us easily transform our negative thoughts into positivity. And when we face impermanent or unexpected situations in life, we can also keep the mindfulness of Amitabha Buddha. So diligence is a must for Bodhisattvas. To cultivate the other five parameters diligently, I can help overcome the source of evil. So in the Sutra, the Buddha also said, the Bodhisattvas has one method that can help them overcome all sufferings, all source of evil. And what is that? It is for them to day and night contemplate and practice the good Dharma, uh, the right Dharma. So to increase the thoughts of good Dharma, uh, thought after thought, and to not allow the least 
unwholesome thoughts to come in. So that's how the Bodhisattva tame their mind is by moment to moment. I really contemplate, I think about, I'm practicing the right Dharma. And that's why diligence uh, is really, really important on our spiritual journey. And next is meditation or meditative concentration. I right, through practicing uh, the previous uh, four parameters, it's much easier for one to enter into meditative concentration, right, to enter into this single-pointed focus, right, to be single-minded or single-hearted. Right? So one can be really in the present and really a focus in one's spiritual cultivation. Right? This is very important. Right? If one can be single-minded in one's practice, right? for instance, if one is single-minded in Nianfo, it can help us to activate our original wisdom, right? which comes the sixth parameter, uh, prajna, or it can be translated as the transcendent wisdom or the great wisdom. Right? This is really the transcendent wisdom of shunyata, right? emptiness. So emptiness doesn't mean nothingness. Emptiness means that there is no permanent fixed self-nature that's attached to anything. It's empty of a self or anything that pertaining to the self. Right? The self is like the individual identity. Right? All this is emptiness in nature. Right? All things are actually constantly changing and they are impermanent. And that's why they are empty of intrinsic existence. Things arise due to causes and conditions. And they're also constantly changing due to different causes and conditions. Like our body is constantly changing. Like our thoughts are constantly changing. So none of this is actually permanent. And that's why it's empty of a self, empty of a permanent fixed self-nature. And that's why we shall perceive things as they are, to perceive reality as it is, right? the suchness of the reality without attachment and separation. And some people may ask, but you said Buddha nature is permanent. So Buddha nature is emptiness. Emptiness is Buddha nature. And this we will also discuss a bit more in the future. Right? This is not an easy concept to grasp by the mind. Right? One needs to let go of all attachment and separation to experience it. If one can realize the emptiness in all things and all phenomena, then one has realized the Buddha nature. So the Buddha nature is also emptiness. Emptiness is also Buddha nature. But again, this a concept of emptiness is also not to be attached. Right? This word is also a way of convenience right? used by the Buddha to really describe the indescribable. Again, we will talk more about this in the near future. Sometimes people may hear about the 10 parameters with the last four being skillful means, vow, spiritual power, and knowledge. But this last four can also be grouped into the sixth parameter, the wisdom of prajna parameter, the wisdom of shunyata, the wisdom of emptiness. Right? With the transcendent wisdom of emptiness, uh, one can give rise to skillful means to help save sentient beings, and one can also make great vows, also have spiritual power, and also knowledge. So there are also the 10 great practices and vows of Bodhisattva Samadabhadra. So these are even higher level of Bodhisattva practices. Right? For anyone, if one wants to realize Buddhahood, right, one must practice the 10 great practices and vows of Bodhisattva Samadabhadra. Right? This include for beings after they attain rebirth in the Pure Land, Right, the 10 great practices and vows of Bodhisattva Samadabhadra is a must for anyone who wants to realize the perfect Buddhahood. So this will also talk more about it 
in the future. And the practice of NIMFO actually encompasses all the six or the ten parameters. Right? If one NIMFO diligently, it can help us overcome uh, greed, overcome the self, and one can practice generosity. If one NIMFO diligently, it helps one to purify the mind, then one can observe the precepts. If one NIMFO diligently, it can help one to cultivate more patience and forbearance. If one NIMFO diligently, one can also be single-minded or single-hearted in our NIMFO practice and enter into meditative concentration. If one NIMFO diligently, to the point of NIMFO Samadhi, one can also activate the wisdom of Shunyata, the transcendent wisdom of emptiness, right? to realize the emptiness in all things and all beings, right? the Buddha nature in all things and all beings, right? which is also the essence of Amitabha Buddha, right? which is also infinite light and life. Right? This is, of course, right, the most difficult thing to do, and this is also the Chen practice of Nianfo. But for Pyongyang practitioners, uh, we don't need to worry too much. You know, if we cannot realize emptiness, uh, that's fine. And most of us, we cannot actually realize enlightenment based on our self-effort. Uh, this is really the most difficult thing to do, to let go of all our attachment and separation. But for Nianfo practitioners, uh, just remember faith, vow, and practice. Faith, vow, and Nianfo and have this sincere heart to attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's pure land in this lifetime, this is a much easier way out for us to realize Buddhahood, I realize enlightenment after this lifetime. So I hope this helps. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya.